When it comes to solidifying a country as a world power, unity is a must. Take a look at the world powers, and for better or worse, whether you like them or not, they are united. A strategic move by European powers carved up Africa into multiple countries, divide and conquer in demonstration. However, East Africa may be the first region to reverse that. The East African Federation, or in Swahili, Shirikisho la Africa Mashariki, is really what it says, a federation of East African countries. The word federation, meaning these six African countries, would now be united into one. One central government, one currency and one language. These six countries are Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda, South Sudan, Tanzania and Uganda, with perhaps a special seventh, but more on that later. The East African Federation would be the successor of the already formed East African Community, which is a confederation. Confederation meaning separate currencies, governments and languages, but united in an allegiance or league. An example of this is the African Union. The proposed capital of this country would be Arusha, Tanzania. Arusha has great significance in the East African region. Currently, the EAC's capital, the city has been the host of settling many disputes and civil wars in East Africa. Staying in Tanzania, the largest city would be Dar es Salaam, with a current population of 7 million people. The country would be the largest country in Africa by surface area and second largest in population with 184 million people. Making it one of the youngest countries in the world, the EAF would have a median age of 16 years old. Mombasa in Kenya and Dar es Salaam would likely be the two cities connecting the country to the rest of the world for trade and commerce, both cities having major ports. The general climate of East Africa is tropical. There is really only two seasons, dry and rainy. The geographical region of the Serengeti in Tanzania would be a warm arid climate. The country's nominal GDP would be estimated at 220 billion USD. However, that number could rise to 270 billion if the Central African powerhouse in the making decides to join. On Thursday the 24th of June 2021, the DRC's president launched a verification mission to the EAC. It is unclear how well the negotiations are currently going. Admittance in the East African community would ultimately mean admittance into the East African Federation. The DRC is no stranger to East Africa. It shares its borders with five of the EAC member states and utilises Dar es Salaam's and Mombasa's ports for trade and commerce. Speaking of ports, the largest exports of the East African Federation would be agricultural products such as tea, coffee, cotton and tobacco. However, the DRC would throw some diamonds in the tea bags, literally. Sitting on a whopping $24 trillion worth of natural resources, the DRC exports, or should I say provides, some of the most valuable resources in the world. Diamonds, gold, copper, tin ore, cobalt and coltan to name a few. The last two minerals being essential in manufacturing products such as phones, computers and cars. In the DRC's case, unification into the East African Federation would put it into a much better position to negotiate fair deals for their resources, of course with the right leadership. The DRC currently being one of the world's least affluent countries is clear evidence they are not getting their bang for their buck. In doing so, this would open more opportunities for intra-African trade. African countries are more or less forced to take unjust international deals because they have no use for each other's resources. With Rwanda opening its first gold refinery, the DRC's gold can now stay on the African continent. Also, 
with industrialization emerging in East Africa, whether it's automotives, refineries, aviation, infrastructure or technology, these resources will be sought after from other Africans. The integrational pillars are a customs union, common market, monetary union and political stability, especially beneficial to Ugandas, Burundis, Warandas and South Sudan citizens and economy. It would give these four landlocked countries a chance to touch the coastline. Coming to the end of this video, let us know what you think of the proposal for the East African Federation. There are many challenges facing the East African Federation, tension between countries and external influence to name a few, but anything worth having will never come easy. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to Habari Tech, your hub for African tech and economics. Thank you.